welcome back to another episode of Friday to Fran and we're currently here at the highest point of the farm park so we're just short of a thousand feet here at the top of the hill and um, behind we've got a set of trees called Buttington Clump and they mark the highest point on the farm and in this field today we have some of the oldest breeds of sheep here at the farm park we've got our Castle McMorrit sheep and um, so they're a primitive breed um, with little horns so we'll just go over and see how they're doing. Uh, the castle we've had. Yeah, the rest are all a bit bigger and stronger. Um, he's a little boy with that classic little blonde face. They're often a breed that um, get overlooked here at the farm park because they are just brown, a little bit boring. They're also quite flighty. They're slightly less likely to come up for food. But their history, the fact that they were so incredibly rare and the passion that we have here for them at the farm park um, makes them really quite special. So as a lamb, they're fairly dark in colour and actually when we shear the mums, they'll go back to this darker colour underneath. But you'll notice the adults are slightly blonder on top and that's just a year's worth of sun bleaching um, of their fleece, which has meant that they end up a little bit paler across their bodies. Um, but still always that paler colour down their tummy and under their chin. And the castor milks this year have all lambed outside. They've had their lambs out here in the field. The lambs are so petite when they're born, skinny little legs and small heads. They very rarely have any issues giving birth. They can deliver them nice and naturally. Um, so they've done it all alone out in the fields and we just come in in the morning and see how many more lambs we've got so they've got nice fat tummies. He's now got a spray mark on his side and his mum's got the same. We put a number on the ewe and we put the number on the lamb once it's born and that way we know who belongs to who. Um, there's quite a few castle milk lambs out here now and if we have any issues with this one we know which his mum is. So out behind me here we've got a first time mum, number seven, and she's looking for him so we'll let him go back. So if you visit the animal barn, you'll know that we put our lambs into little pens once they're born and then they go into a nursery pen. But here out in the field with our primitive zoo lemming outside, there's no need to go through all that procedure unless there's an issue. So the mums are fairly good, they're brilliant mothers and they're born in such a small group. Um, and a little flock together that there's rarely a confusion. We rarely have more than one new lamb a day amongst these little flocks um, so you don't get mix-ups and the mums manage to bond. They all live together and they know who belongs to who. So we'll pop him down here and his mum should come and find him. He's by far the smallest of the group. Here she comes, number seven, straight up, sniff of him, make sure it's definitely her lamb and then she should welcome him in for some milk. Again another double check. And you can see just how flighty she is. She's a little bit anxious around me. She's a, what we call a shearling. So she's a first time mum. She's just turning two years old now. She'll have been born here at the farm park two years ago, out in a field just around the corner. And now gone on to have her. So sheep in this paddock are the complete opposite to the Castle McMorrits we just saw. Um, when I'm asked by people who visit the farm park here and they've got a paddock behind their house and they're thinking of getting a few sheep and they want to know what breed I'd advise, I nearly always say the Shetlands. They're so easy to keep and they're always really, really friendly. They've got lovely docile little characters. Having said that, they do have a few mischievous moments here on the farm, um, but on the whole they're one of the easiest breeds we have and real little characters. So they are small, they have fairly small lambs, um, and they come in over 30 different colours, which makes them even more exciting. You can have a whole flock that look completely different. Um, but at the farm park here, they're always jumping up for animal snacks at the fence. So we've mostly got brown coloured ones here. Um, I don't know all the Scottish names for all their colours. There is a chart we have um, that tells us all the different names, and we have to pick which colour they are before we register them. Um, but they are very sweet, very quiet, very calm breed of sheep and it's said that their fleece is so soft that once it's spun into a shawl, that shawl, which is a wedding shawl, can be threaded through a lady's wedding ring. It is that fine and delicate, so amazing. They're no longer classed as a rare breed, which is fantastic. Um, they're still quite popular up in Shetland where they do farm them commercially and there are some farmers um, down right throughout England that also farm them commercially on a smaller scale, but hugely popular with smallholders just because they are so placid, so tame and so easy to keep.
so we'll pick up this little lamb here. He's a few days old now. He's got his tags in. The Shetlands are naturally short-tailed, so most of the breeds we have here at the farm park have a long tail that hangs down. The Shetlands are always born with this very tiny, short little tail, almost like a very short little pigtail. And that means that they generally keep a really nice clean bottom as well, so you don't have so much worry with flies and maggots as we do with other breeds. As I say, they've got an amazing range of colours. I always like the ones that have got a nice little white blaze. And you can't give them their specific colours until they're a little bit older because they can change in colour slightly as they get a bit older. The one problem we do have with our Shetlands though is we tend to run them a little bit more with the old, uh, bigger sheep here at the farm. Um, but they are good escape artists out the barn and we've got one sheep in particular who spent a whole of this winter walking around the farmyard and we put her back in the barn but she can slither out the little gap where they eat their silage. Um, so it's not strange to drive around the main farmyard here at Bembra and see a Shetland just randomly walking around on the concrete. She never goes far, she knows where to go back. Um, so we actually gave up putting her back because she just slips in and out and doesn't go beyond a few metres away. So you might notice that with a lot of our primitive breeds, and the Shetlands are no exception, that at this time of the year they start to look quite scruffy. Their wool starts to fall off. So they have an incredibly fine wool that um, is brilliant for making clothes. But the old breeds of sheep, like the Shetland, will naturally molt their fleece. So as the weather warms up, their fleece starts to fall off. So sheep originally did this to keep them cool through the summer. Um, thousands of years ago, when we domesticated sheep, we bred them to keep on growing their fleece. Therefore, we could cut it off and harvest it. But these very ancient breeds, like the Shetlands, will still molt their fleece, which means we don't have to shear them in May and due time. We often do give them a shear. Their fleece is very fine quality, but it also tidies them up a bit quicker. Um, but just like this girl, her fleece is already starting to shed off as the weather starts to warm up. So here we've got a set of twins, a really good mum here. She's one of the older ewes here at the park. Um, and you can see even a set of twins can look really different and they look completely different from mum as well. A little boy here who's slightly paler, a little girl who's much darker. They can range in colours right from white all the way to black, so you've got everything in between. So we'll give her one back. She is a brilliant mum. Also the Shetlands have little fear of humans, so she's not too fussed about coming up close and not too fussed about chasing off the goats either.